If you're into swords at all, you've probably heard the name Peter Johnson before. He's a guy that works for Albion Swords and he will go to museums and look at the originals. He'll handle them and make sketches and take measurements and weigh them. And then he takes that information back to Albion and um, he will design the different swords for their production lines. He's a master swordsmith, he's an artist, historian, researcher, and he does some pretty amazing scabbard work as well. Not too long ago, I came across a sword and a scabbard that he had made uh, for a museum, and it was posted on Facebook, I think, and when I saw the scabbard with its floral, leafy pattern, it was just so gorgeous and graceful that I thought to myself, it would be really fun to replicate that uh, as best as I'm able to and show you that on camera. So today I've got um, a scabbard, uh, it has a single riser here, and I'm gonna leave some room for the belt, and below that, I'm going to do my very best to replicate um, like the floral pattern. So I'm, I'm just going to sketch it out and then once I've got that sketch, I will transfer that here and then I'll begin doing some tooling. The last time I tried tooling a scabbard, um, you know, I was a little bit disappointed with the results. You can see that in the, the link I've got below, but it's a new nightly scabbard. And um, it was my very, very first time doing any tooling. You know, I always encourage you to try new things and I also try things all the time that I've never done. And I felt like I probably should have looked at something. I should have had some reference material before I had just started to do some tooling on that scabbard. And this time I do. So I'm going to use Peter Johnson's work and do my best to, uh, to copy it. Now the reason I'm not showing you Peter Johnson's work at this point is that I don't have his permission to do that. And I feel like it wouldn't be respectful to uh, just use his images, uh, his hard work in my videos. I did try to send him a quick note, I didn't hear back from him, really didn't give him enough time to respond anyway though, so I don't know whether or not he would have responded, but um, that's the reason. I just don't want to use images that are already copyrighted or you know that I don't have permission to use. Obviously I didn't get a chance to see him create the scabbard, but one thing that I noticed immediately is that the picture he posted uh, was you know, half completed scabbard and it was already attached, it was already on the core. Um, so that that is a very different method than what I did in the past. Um, the last video I did, I did all the tooling just on a flat piece of leather before I had put it onto the scabbard and um, thought it would be cool to give it a try and see see how it works if I try his method. In full disclosure, I've never seen anyone make a scabbard. I've only been able to look at pictures of what these things look like when they're finished. So I don't know, maybe always they're done while they're on um, the core, or perhaps it's a preference type of deal. In the picture, he has the blade in the scabbard, so that might provide just a little bit more stability. We'll see how that goes. Uh, everything is sort of an experiment. Everything I do, uh, although I try to plan things, try to understand things before I do them, um, often I don't really know how they're going to turn out. So it's sort of an adventure. Now I could do this whole thing all the way down, include everything, but what I'll probably do instead is um, at a certain point where I feel comfortable with where this is going, I'll try to map this out uh, onto the scabbard and we'll just go from there. So I may not complete this whole thing. You can see this is obviously like a piece of paper that's, uh, I don't know, um, six, like nine inches. It's like a nine inch piece of paper. And the amount of space that I have here is probably closer to uh, twice that, maybe 18 to 20 inches. So what I'll do is instead of, you know, creating this very long drawn out um, image or set of images, I will just start to transfer this onto the scabbard um, and then you know we'll go from there we'll see how it how it works I mentioned already that I didn't have a chance to actually see Peter Johnson create the scabbard that I'm referring to that I have referred to he did take a picture of the tools he was using and they included a hammer and a chisel that he had made out of a, a small piece of metal uh, maybe three or four inches long and I thought about trying the same exact thing um, his chisel was shaped like uh, you can see this it was shaped like this this is the end that you hit and then tapering down to what appeared to be a more of a round point um, so 
thought about making something like that for myself, but decided not to. I'm just gonna go with a swivel knife, which is uh, the typical carving tool. I actually don't have much experience with a swivel knife beyond, you know, working with it the last few minutes. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to use this knife. Um, it has a slight bevel here, and it's really not sharp at all. So I've uh, been trying to sharpen it just a little bit um, because it seems like some of the success that you might have has to do with how sharp it is. I've heard that sometimes these have like a hollow ground point. In this case, it's just a simple bevel. And then in terms of actually laying down the design, there are a few ways I could do that. Uh, even though I'll stain this leather, if I put anything like ink down, it still would probably be noticeable, so I'd want to avoid that. Um, I could use like a, a wax uh, pen or, or marker, something like that, but that would probably prevent the, um, the moisture that I want to put in here that will help with the carving. You know, my other choices would be like a very soft lead pencil. I've got this 9B pencil, and I might use it, although once I put the water down on top of it, it might be harder to see this, so I'm not sure this is going to be that effective. I'm going to see how much of this comes off. Let me put this down. Probably most. Uh, no, you can still see it. You might not be able to see it, but I can still see it is good. I have mixed um, the wa some water with this EcoFlow Easy Carve Concentrate. It's like a 50-50 solution with water. We want it to penetrate pretty deeply. Now that we've got some of the pencil lines in there, we're going to be just carving it out. And uh, didn't realize until later that the angle that you're looking at this from is not the best. My hand's in the way most of the time there, but i uh, also going to use this tool. Uh, this is going to be the background tool and just work it around the side of um, all the shapes there and I'm using a hammer to, uh, to imprint that. Although the leather is almost soft enough to push this in by hand um, and sometimes I am using it by hand whenever we have to get into one of those really small areas like where two of the little leaves come together and there's like a point. Obviously it doesn't fit in there so I just sort of angle that and push it with my hand rather than hammer it. I realized also that you know one of the advantages that Peter's tool may have over the swivel knife is that it seems to cut out a wider space like a wider outline for all the leaves and uh, the swivel knife basically cuts a very narrow line and uh, it doesn't make it stand out quite as well. Also another thing that he does if you happen to find his pictures the background on his the punch is obviously different from mine I think it's his is probably a lot better and the more and more I look at this background punch the more I feel like it's not it's not perfect um it it's creates these little mounds you know tiny little mounds wherever I punch it and grouped together they don't look that great I feel like uh the punch probably should have been a smaller background punch I think the easiest way to use this knife is to pull it towards you. So whether the knife is being moved in clockwise motion or in counterclockwise motion, you want to make sure you're dragging it towards you and never pushing it away from you. And then uh, wherever the leather is dry, it's okay to go ahead and um, start sketching out the rest of the design or as much as you want to do. So I'm going to do maybe two or four inches at a time rather than the whole thing. You could actually put the whole design on it, but um, this pencil, because it's a pretty soft lead, it may wipe off or smear, and it just maybe more clean up if you if that you do that. At this point, you can see the design coming together. It looks more like an image than it did before, and I'm really not crazy about that background punch. Um, I wish I had a few that I had chosen and tested out, <laughs> so you may want to do that. I'll probably have a follow-up video at some point here so you can see what it looks like before and after the dye is applied. And then I'll, you know, I'd like to do another video where I'm, I'm hopefully better down the road at carving. But I appreciate you being here today and uh, 
you guys take care.